Okay, now that we have our camera working, we could pick from the image library, we could post, uh, we could reverse. Um, we want to actually show those videos in our home feed now. If we go back to Superbase, we could see these buckets of items, two images. Um, we want to grab those videos from the database and then get a signed URL from Superbase. So you can't just grab, or we don't want to just make everything in the Superbase storage bucket public. So what we want to do is use the Superbase functionality to be able to get signed URLs. And you can make that signed URL last for 60 seconds, 60 minutes, 60 days, 60 years. Um, it doesn't really matter um, what you want, but uh, we want to use that get create signed uh, URL to get those videos. First thing we're going to do though is to be able to get the videos. Um, we want to add some functionality to our home screen and not just show this JSON blob. So first thing we're going to do is do a function to get videos from Superbase. So we're going to import Superbase. You think Superbase or think ChatGPT would learn to get utils. From video, select an order by created at. Okay. And then we could limit. We don't need a limit. We only have two items right now. And make sure we're getting that data. So we want to do this on a load. And we want to import React. Okay. So let's double check. We got our video list. So in this video list, we have created at ID, title, and URI if, yes, URI being blocked by the recorder. Okay, so now we have our videos, but we can't just post the video right away. We want to be able to actually get the URL. So the way we do that is to be able to do, um, let's see, let's create another function called const get signed URLs. And so we'll pass this data into get signed URLs. And so signed URLs takes an array of IDs, so or array of URIs. So what we needed to do is pass in the path of that video. Um, but we can't pass in this whole object. So what we need to do is um, Let's see, name this to videos and then videos dot map the video URL. That's not the key. Video URI. And then we need to pass in the cache. So let's do 60 times 60 times. Um, okay, so we have super base storage from videos, and that's the name of the bucket. Remember, the bucket is lowercase videos, and then the table is uppercase video to differentiate the two. And what are we getting? Property get signed URLs does not exist on storage. Oh, create signed URLs. And I would be sure to call out, there's two different functionalities here. Create signed URLs with an S, so multiple takes an array of IDs or array of strings, um, which is the path, and then create signed URL, which only takes one item. And so if you pass an array into this signed URL, you'll get a stored, a does not exist error. And ask me why I know that, because I ran into that issue myself. Um, okay, so we can see down here where we get the object path that we want. So we have error is null, which is a good thing, the path, and then now we have the signed URL. So what we want to do is create a new object. It's basically videos with signed URLs, but that's too long. Um, video URLs, and then we want to map through the videos and create a new, let's just do item, item dot signed URL equals data dot find 
assign URL where the path equals URI and assign URL and then return the item. And create. Okay, so we're going to create a new array of video URLs that maps through the videos pulled in from the database and modifies it and adds a new key called signed URL with this URL that we just created and returns it. And then we're going to log this. Okay, there we go. So now we have our data object with created at ID, signed URL, title, and user. There we go. Okay, perfect. So one thing we actually want to add to this is we want to join user. There we go. We want to join on user so we see this user ID. So when we loop through the video, we want not only the signed URL from the video so we can actually play it, we want to show the title of the video, which we can see the title is already included here. And then also the username, which is not on this object, but we could join the users table from the user ID so that we get the username. So if we remove this log and then reload it, we should see this object with the user object on it now. So now we can see that this user with the username of nerd um, posted this video. Perfect. Okay, so now we just want to get rid of this string. And what we want to do is, hmm, so we, what we want to do is use a flat list and we want to loop through the video items with that flat list. So let's add the flat list. And we want to add flat list. We want to import it from React Native. And video player doesn't quite exist yet. So what we're going to do is just do Expo AV. So we didn't install, or we did install AV, Expo AV from the previous camera functionality. And basically, what we want to do is use the same component. Now we're going to turn this into its own component, um, but just to see if this is working correctly, let's copy and paste it from AV. Add dimensions. Remember, dimensions. If nothing shows up and it doesn't give you an error, that means you don't have the dimensions correct. Okay, so we now we have this signed URLs, um, but we want to store it const videos and then we also need the ref so const video ref perfect so we want to set the videos instead of just logging so then we have video ref we have we want to replace source with Signed URL, resize cover is looping, status. So it's not going to play right away, but we want to just see if it shows up. There we go. And we have a list of videos that isn't playing just yet, but at least it's showing. We want to add some fields onto this. So for flat list, see how it's scrolling kind of like between items, we want to snap to grid. So there's a few different uh, things we could put on to this to be able to snap to certain grids. And you can see all the elements we have here. So we could change the direction, horizontal, vertical, invert it up and down, key extractor is required. So you either put on the key on the element or the key extractor. Number of columns, which we'll use eventually on the profile page on refresh. So when you pull down, you can do an action to get more data. Um, render item and data are the two things that are required, and everything else is optional. Um, so there's a lot of methods here. It's very, very flexible of what you can do with it. And so what we're going to do, I keep adding to the video item instead by accident. OK, I'm going to put it up here. So snap to alignment.
So there we go. We can see how it snaps to the top and bottom. Although now I'm seeing this. Oh, home screen. Okay. Let's get rid of this. There we go. Now it's full screen. Perfect. Okay. So now it snaps to screen and it's based on the window height. So it'll be dynamic. So there we go. So now the next thing I want to do is actually move this video object into its own component. So we're going to do a new file video. Yeah, let's just name a video for now. And then let's just copy and paste this. You want to remove everything that's not the video. So we literally just want this video object. I want to keep the video ref. And so what we're going to do, we're going to pass into this function, the not the whole item, but uh, well, actually, we are going to pass the whole item because we want to be able to access the username uh, and title and everything in, in this video thing. So item dot send URL. Pass an item to video object. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> this is the problem with the renaming. Let's do video player. That'll do it. Okay. Naming is hard. All right, so our problem was it was you can't name the object. We were naming it video, and it's the same as the name from Expo AV, so that's why it wasn't showing up. Okay, next thing we want to do is actually get this to play on load. So if we go to our video object, we only want to play when it's active. So the way we do that is we need to be able to track the index of the current live item through the flat list. And there's this function called on viewable items changed. And if we just log what it shows, we could see changed. And then if we scroll, we could see it has a new item. So this allows us to track the certain index of the active viewable area. And we only want to play that viewable player. So what we want to do is remove all the stuff that we're not using. And let's do is active. Let's just default it to true. Or is is viewable. And pass it into the view. And then Let's do react dot use effect and we want to track if it's viewable. If it's viewable, then we want to play it. If it's not, then we want to pause it. There we go. So now it's playing, but right now both videos are playing because we're just passing in. We're just passing in true to both of them. So we want to be able to track which one is actually live. So is viewable. So we're going to create a new const. Let's do like active index. Set to active index. And then, okay, so let's do set active index. So this is the actual key. And then active index. And then we want to do if active index equals equals item.id, and that is viewable. Okay, let's try this. And then once we scroll down to this one, Record. the annoying audio Record. is playing. Record. Record. <laughs> okay, there we go. 
So now we have our active index. My annoying voice is actually helping here. Um, okay, so there we go. So now we have our home feed on load. It starts playing right away. And we scroll, it starts playing the next video and stops the previous one. And there we go. And we have it all through the get signed URLs. And let's clean up some of this stuff. Awesome. So in the next video, we're going to add some functionality to this. So on TikTok, you could see a profile, you could see, you could like that item, you can share that item, uh, and you could also see like the username and the title of the video. So we're going to add an, uh, an overlay so that there's more actionable items on this video itself.